If I can ever get away with making a static site, I will always do it because there is nothing easier and cheaper to deploy and host than what is ultimately just some HTML files. Sure, it's not quite like the old days where you just write out some HTML files yourself. We have some complex frameworks and build systems in place to actually generate those HTML files for us, but the end result is just as simple. I've recently done some videos on building SSG sites with Angular and Astro, and this works great for things like marketing sites and blogs or anything really where you can just throw these static files up on some CDN and then people can just access those files. But I have membership course sites like my Angular course that doesn't just provide public access to all of the content. There are parts of the site that I need to paywall such that only people who have purchased the course can view it. The effect I wanted to achieve was basically to allow anybody to view any lesson from the course, but for most of the lessons, if you are not logged in in some capacity, you would only see previews of the members only lessons. But I really wanted to keep the simplicity of building all of this as a static site using markdown files and not have to deal with hosting servers and databases. The solution I came up with is quite simple, perhaps a bit unorthodox, but I've been using it successfully for maybe five years or so. And not just with Angular and Astro. Previously, I've done the same thing with SvelteKit and before that React and Gatsby. It doesn't really matter what you are building these static files with. I doubt I am the first person to come up with this idea, but I think it is worthwhile pointing out that it is just something I came up with to solve a problem I had. This is not some tried and true method that is going to work for every circumstance, and it is somewhat of a hack. If you do end up using this approach for something of your own, do your own research and use at your own risk and all of that. So the basic idea is pretty simple. There are three possible authorization states for my course site. A non-authorized user, a user who has purchased the standard package, and a user who has purchased the extended package. On the normal routes for the site, I set it up such that only the public content is generated. For example, all of my content is written in markdown files and I have this custom remark plugin I wrote that will check the front matter for this is preview field. If it is not present, the content will be generated in full. If it is present, it will cut off 70% of the content. The trick is that I then duplicate the content for each membership type. I can do this quite simply in Astro by creating an extra folder in the content section that is just a sim link to wherever the normal content is. That means that if I have a lesson available at this route, the exact same lesson will be available at a route prefixed with a membership type as well because of those sim link folders. What I haven't mentioned yet about that custom remark plugin I wrote is that it will also handle checking the current route. If the membership type specified in the is preview field in the front matter is present in the route, it will return the full content, not just a preview. So that means that if I go to this route to access a lesson and it gives me just a preview version, I could then just prefix the route with standard or extended to get the full version. The obvious problem here is that although this works, nothing prevents any user from just accessing the membership routes. To handle this, I use a Cloudflare worker. Again, the idea is pretty simple. Any requests to load the static HTML files are going to be routed through this worker. The worker will then check for a valid JSON web token indicating that the user requesting the resource is authorized to access the standard or extended routes. If they are authorized, it will deliver them the content at that route, otherwise it will redirect them to the normal route that will only show them the preview version. The final piece of this puzzle is actually generating that JWT. To handle the actual sale of my courses, I always use some third party provider. Previously that was Gumroad and now it is Lemon Squeezy. In both cases, they have an API that allows me to check whether a certain license key is valid for a certain product. So to handle the login process, I have just one Lambda function that I deploy along with my site. This provides an endpoint I can hit for the login form that is on the course site where the user enters their license key. And the cloud function will then handle validating that license key with the Lemon Squeezy API. And if that license key is valid, it will generate a JWT with the appropriate membership type that is then stored in a cookie. In all future requests to authenticated routes, the Cloudflare worker will check for the JWT in that cookie. So in the end, I get to build my course sites like a simple blog with just Markdown, and I can just deploy a bunch of static files to production. 
I love the DX this provides and also the peace of mind I get. When you're just hosting a bunch of HTML files, there isn't really anything that can break in the middle of the night. I think I'm still a little traumatized from a while back when my self-hosted VPS would run out of memory and ruin my whole day. Anyway, if you found this video useful or interesting, a like or subscribe before you go would be greatly appreciated, and I hope to see you back here for the next video.